Hey guys. You guys know how I always love to have my Omar in these videos. Right? Right? Um. So this is what I wrote. I, I'm putting this out on Yahoo Answers. Um, as I've done in the past. Sometimes the Yahoo Answers community has, you know, valid advice or insight, and most of the time they don't, but it's hard even in these videos to ever really explain um, what's going on. But if you're smart and you're watching my videos, you'll understand the whole underlying thing involved here. Sure, I, I appreciate my aunt letting me stay here in my mom's home, but it, it shouldn't be my, my aunt's decision, get it? I liken it to, um, I don't know, if you were in jail or something, and, um, you know, yeah, my aunt's being nice to me, but... Well, I can't like it. It's just really not the same thing, you know. Like if you were in jail and a warden just decided to be nice to you, it didn't change the fact that it doesn't change. It wouldn't change the fact that you were in jail. Just like I know you don't want to sit on Mama's lap, but tough luck, it's on now. Um, it wouldn't change the fact that you were in jail. I'm not being nice to me, and me even thanking her for allowing me to stay in my mother's home doesn't change the fact that it shouldn't be her decision in the first place. I mean, does, if you can't understand that, people, then I can't help you, okay? But anyway, I could simply crumble to the ground and cry not fair in regards to all of this crap, as I've done on more than one occasion in my life, you know, crumble to the ground and cry not fucking fair. But really, what's the point? I recently finally escaped from the abusive situation that I've been trapped in for 11 wasted years of my life. So lots of things about my life have clearly been unfair, considering my abusive relationship for the past, you know, from 2001 to 2012. Uh, 11 years, yeah. Really exactly 11 years. Um seven years, eight months as his girlfriend, supposed girlfriend, Dormac, <laughs> and the rest as the only difference was there was no sex and the sex sucked anyway, so what does it really matter if there's no sex and affection? I mean, <sighs> anyway, um, so, like I said, tip of the iceberg. As I've said in other videos, I have been abused in one way or another, periodically, not constantly, you know, my, throughout my entire life, you know, so, what, what, what do you want? I've accepted, you know, just that at this point I'm a broken, damaged creature. I'm never gonna, I'm just, don't have it in me to, to, to trust or to, I'm just never gonna have you know, the kind, I've never had it, I'm never going to have the kind of relationship as featured in movies, like The Vow, which is based on a true story, The Lucky One, The Notebook, uh, any of them, take your pick, okay? I'm never going to have that. I've accepted it, because um, my mom never had it either, and now she's 66, and she's pretty much accepted it, you know? Um, that it, it's not going to happen at this point. It's better that I accept it than, if, than that I just, you know, like I said, I'm not going to have that, but love is hard, sex is easy, you know. I'll find someone to have sex with again, believe me. I will have no intention of going without that. Um, But it's going to be 
you know, on my terms, and it's going to be somebody that, that, you know, I'm a different fucking creature than I was when that asshole found me. Um, so what is it? Who cares? Really? Who fucking cares? I'm not willing to put in the effort. I'll make half-assed attempts at dating websites, you know, just to see. I can test men out there. I can see who gets upset that they never hear back from me. I don't have to respond to anybody. I'm, I, you know, I don't know what's the protocol on that, but if I'm not attracted to you, why bother to write you and say, I'm not attracted to you or you're not my type? Plus, I want to, you know, if I don't, I have my period now and I haven't gone out to that, you know, it, hypothetically speaking, but whatever, you know. Um, It'd be interesting to see if someone gets mad that they never hear from me and then they write, from, write to me again, you know. You can test people if they get angry because they don't know if you have the fucking flu. The, it's a flu epidemic here in Massachusetts, apparently in other states too, you know. They don't know why you haven't contacted them. Could be that you're just not attracted to them, period, and you don't have to be. Just like in real life. Just like I used to say, you know. I... I don't condemn you men who wouldn't have given me the time of day at 232 pounds and now you'd be after me like a puppy dog, you know, like a dog in heat or whatever. You know, and um, when I'm 70 pounds lighter. So it is what it is. I don't fucking care, okay? But I do care that my mom... Of course I'm going to care that, that nobody knows what my aunt's doing. Could what she's doing be totally on the up and up? Sure. But she still has no right to be doing it without my mom being able to know anything. You understand? Power of attorneys are not supposed to be signed behind your back. We you sign some document that you don't know what it is in your sister's kitchen while her two sons watch as witnesses. It's supposed to be done in an office. It's supposed to, you're supposed to be made completely aware of what it entails. The internet says you don't sign a durable power of attorney without long, hard, and thought about it because it gives that person ex power. I mean, it makes that person you, essentially, when it comes to your assets and finances, okay? You don't do it. And my entire family um, that lives in La La Land, if they, they just think that... that Marion can do what she wants, and Marion too, and and my mom's not going to question it. Like I said, and I'm a liability. I'm I'm expendable. I've always been expendable my entire life. Okay, but I've accepted what is love for me. No, that's why this recent guy friend or whatever. <laughs> trying to tell me what to do, and this is exactly what you, you know, you're really serious about finding love, you should hide your weirdness, and this is, oh, fuck you. It's like Anne Hathaway in Love and Other Drugs, you know. It is what it is. She didn't think she would find love, because who wants somebody who has Parkinson's disease that's getting worse and worse, that they know they're going to have to be a bird to take care of in, no matter what, in the end, you know. Of course, she found it, because it's a movie. Um, but, whatever, like I said, I could simply crumble to the ground and cry, not fair, in regards to all this crap, as I've done on more than one occasion in my life, but really, what's the point? I recently finally escaped from the abusive situation that I've been trapped in for 11 wasted years of my life, so lots of things about my life have clearly been unfair. Equals. My mother, who currently has no choice but to take a daily cocktail of three very powerful psych meds. And you think she has a choice? She doesn't, okay? She's terrified of being thrown back in the mental hospital that my aunt sectioned her into five times in less than 11, in 11 months. Uh, simply lacks the mental capabilities required to see the danger for me. You know how frustrating it is for me? for me in regards to this durable POA power of attorney that legally makes all of my mother's assets my half aunts. And at this point, I simply wish 
hope to do damage control and at least make sure that my mother has a will. Since in the event of her demise, my mother truly does want everything she has and owns to go to me and not to her half-sister and to, and or to her half-sister's family. I say and or because, you know, something happened in my eye, you know, so my mother doesn't want her assets to, cause, to go to her half-sister and or have sister's family. You understand that this was not done in a court? That should anything ever happen to my Aunt Marion, it would probably just be accepted that, that her husband, Marion's husband, who doesn't, and kids, or whatever, that don't give a flying fuck about my mother, would take over where Marion left off. Do you understand what goes on in my family? And nobody gives a fuck? Do you understand that I'm expendable because I was off in L.A. being abused for 11 years and I couldn't stop what was going on here and I had my own fucking problems to deal with, okay? And now I have no... My mom will not listen to me. Marion has won her over. Marion's here. Marion's been nice to her. She just wants Marion to be nice to her, okay? She will not believe that Marion could possibly be do anything, doing anything unkosher unethical behind her back. My mom refuses to believe it. She believed it before, but you know, you would, it's just like if you were a hostage to somebody, you know. Marion uses, my mom used to call me in LA, Marion uses manipulation, intimidation, f uh, lies, phony love, or whatever, you know. I'm just out for your best interest, Laura's mom. I'm not after your estate. I have plenty of money of my own. And my mom will parrot these things back to me. Don't say anything bad about Marion. Look, she, my mom, who's on three psych meds, is trying to tell me, an extremely brilliant, college-educated woman who has studied and studied and studied the big stuff. I minored in philosophy, majored in English, okay? It's tricks. It's manipulation. It's whatever. I see the underlying things, even in what my mom used to complain and gripe to me about when I was 3,000 miles away and couldn't do anything about it, okay? My mom has accepted what is. She will not rock the boat. She will not make waves because she is terrified of being thrown back in the mental hospital. That is the bottom line here, people, okay? Not a damn fucking thing that I can do about it because I am not a pillar of the community. I'm on psych, psych disability, you know, so I'm... I'm stuck with my aunt having this power of attorney over my mom unless my mom decides to fight it and she won't. Especially she doesn't want to upset the family. Upset the family. Like she screamed at me when she threw me and had me go to the shelter. You know, my aunt, you know, your aunt, blah, blah, blah. Stephanie's dying. Don't upset the family, Laura. Stop being so selfish. That's what I have to deal with with having this mentally ill mom. But she doesn't know that she's being ignorant and stupid. Okay? Sorry, but stupid people rarely know that they're being stupid and ignorant. It's just the way it is. Sorry to be so politically incorrect, but it's the truth. You know, my mom doesn't even want to hear about this power of attorney. My mom can't grasp the concept that a durable power of attorney is this most powerful document, powerful power of attorney. Sorry to use a double whatever, but, you know, it's the, mo the strongest, the most powerful power of attorney you can sign. It makes, it may essentially makes whoever has the power of attorney over you, you. Okay? That's why I say to my mom, Mom, this is not your house. It's Marion's house. I have the bill of sale. Stop saying that. It's not Marion's house. It's mine. I have the bill of sale. It doesn't matter. Your checkbook has your name on it, too. You understand, Mom? Marion has the power to sell this house oh, if Marion turned evil or if some people can change. What if her husband divorced her? What if, what, what if whatever? It doesn't matter. She has the power and she shouldn't have it to sell this house from out from under my mother and put my mother on the street. She legally has that power and to take off to Bawa Mawa, Tiwahiti, Bawa Wawa, whatever, you know. I'm not saying she would do it. I'm saying you never know about life and about people and what might happen if the other aunt dies, okay? 
My mom was locked up in one of those mental hospitals and calling up and crying to me because the family cookout was that day on a Sunday. My mom was literally five minutes down the road and nobody even called her, let alone thought, well, why don't we stop by and see Laura's mom, see how she's doing since she knows it's a family cookout. She's all alone in that nut house. No, they didn't. Okay? Don't, don't try to pull the wool over my eyes and don't sit there, Marion, and hug me and say, this is what she says to me. Can we just, you know, forget we were ever mean to each other? Mean to each other. Just like she brushes aside any of my mom's concerns that I put in my mom's head. But my mom would have these concerns if she understood or if she wasn't so fucking naive and gullible and I'm sorry, ignorant and not that much mental capacity to grasp these types of things, okay? And when they, she doesn't understand it, so she'll just yell at me and just tell me to shut up, basically. Just shut up. I don't want to hear anything about Marion. All right? And I'm a really, really fucking smart. You can call that arrogant all you want. You people out there, some of you who care about me have called me brilliant and beautiful, by the way. All right? So anyway, uh, at least make sure that my mother has a will. Since in the event of her demise, my mother truly does want everything she has owns to go to me and not to her half-sister and or her half-sister's family. A no-brainer in my eyes. It's a no-brainer in my eyes. And my mom wants everything to go to me and not to her half-sister and her ha to her half-sister's family. But look at the world I'm living in. Sincerely, me, Laura Lise P. The end. This is part three. There's going to be a part four that explains everything in more detail if you're fucking interested at all.